Hey guys, Josh from SoccerReviewsForYou.com bringing you my review plus on feet video of the Nike Hypervenom Phantom 2 version 2 because this does have the old honeycomb Nike skin upper from the original Hypervenom Phantom in the new pitch dark pack colorway. Now included with the shoes inside the box is this little tag right here that essentially lets you know that the graphic printed on the bottom of the sole plate and studs will wear off over time, but that's obviously something that won't impact the performance. We'll touch on that a little bit later in the video. They also include a Hypervenom themed string bag, which is black and gray in color, along with, of course, the shoes themselves, which I have right here. So this is the new pitch dark pack colorway for the Hypervenom Phantom 2. Like I said, it does feature the Generation 1 Honeycomb Nike skin upper that does appear to be a permanent change for future Hypervenom colorways. We obviously first saw it on the Spark Brilliance Pack colorway, uh, but like I said, it does seem to be a permanent change. And in today's video, we are going to take a closer look at the colorway itself. We're gonna talk tech specs, performance features, as well as take a look at the weight of the shoes and how they fit and feel on feet. So if you're interested in learning more about this specific colorway of the Hypervenom Phantom 2, stick around and watch the entire video. If you're interested in a pair of these for yourself, there will be a pop-up on screen and a link in the description that'll take you directly to the review page on my website. Where on that page, you will find Buy It Now link with exclusive SR4U coupon codes, where you'll be able to pick these guys up below their normal $275 retail price. So again, if you're interested in a pair, those links are available to you. And with that being said, let's get right into the review. To start things off, let's take a closer look at the colorway. Now, just like the rest of the pitch dark shoes, this does feature a mostly black color scheme, but you do have reflective and volt yellow elements in the shoe as well. So the entire upper is pretty much black. Uh, you're gonna find that for the majority of the Nike skin, the black laces, the exposed fly knit is black, although when it stretches out across the top of the foot, as well as at the collar, it does reveal a volt yellow accent, which you also have in the form of this little ring at the top of the collar. Same thing with the entire inside of the shoe. Uh, and then you're gonna find black in the hypervenom kind of crackle graphic going around both sides of the shoe, and then black as the wearable graphic printed on the sole plate and stud pattern. The gray elements that you see, which are within the Nike swooshes, as well as the actual Hypervenom zigzag graphic, though that is actually reflective material. So when you take a picture with flash, or if you're in the right type of kind of stadium lighting environment that does reflect the light and it almost turns into like a bright white lit up color, which actually looks really, really cool um, when it is in full effect. And then of course you have Volt Yellow as an accent in the form of the outline for the Nike swoosh, the little collar elements and fly knit elements that I pointed out, the Nike skin, the ACC branding, and the little Nike swoosh here at the bottom, which the combination of Volt Yellow and Black, I think always looks good. And as far as the pattern on the sole plate wearing off, it doesn't necessarily wear off all that quickly. Um, and given that this is kind of dark gray on black, when it does eventually wear away, it's not actually gonna impact the look of the shoe all that much, which is kind of a good thing. So all in all, I think this shoe looks really, really good. I'm a fan of the color combo, but let me know what you guys think down below in the comment section. Do you like how these look? Why or why not? And with that being said, let's move on to the tech specs so we can learn a little bit more about the overall performance. When it comes to performance, this is, in my opinion, a better version of the Phantom 2, uh, which is the version 2 variation featuring the original Nike skin uh, honeycomb upper that we got on the original Hypervenom Phantom 1. Now, if you guys don't exactly know what's going on with this situation, why the upper has changed, I have a playtest video of the Hypervenom Finish, which is the low cut Phantom 2 essentially, with the same upper, where I go over what the differences are, the changes that they've made, and how the actual performance and feel of the shoe is in comparison to the original variation of the Phantom 2 and finish model. So there'll be a little pop up on screen. Go ahead and check out that video if you haven't seen it already. Now with this shoe, the upper is made from, like I said, that generation one honeycomb Nike skin upper from the Phantom One. Now this is a meshed base synthetic with a thin polyurethane Nike skin covering. That's why it has the honeycomb texturing. It's a little bit difficult to see on this colorway because it is kind of all black. It's a darker color, but it is still there and it does have some good softness to it. Now, unlike the original Phantom One, which did have a very soft upper, a very comfortable fit, it lacked instability and general responsiveness just because the material would kind of overstretch as you wore them. You don't have that issue with this shoe. You get the flexibility and the softness of the original Nike skin, although this is a little bit firmer due to a solid liner, which acts as one reinforcement element, as well as 
flywire cables that you find running from the base of the sole into the lacing system on both sides of the shoe. Those two elements combined when you pull the laces tight make for a shoe that, like I said, kind of has the softness of the original Nike skin upper as well as a, a, a thin but slightly cushioned touch because of that mesh base to the material. But you also get the responsiveness of the original variation of the Phantom 2. So it's kind of the best of both worlds in terms of combining the best of the Phantom 1 and the best of the original Phantom 2, if that makes any sense. Uh, hopefully you follow that because I know it can get a little bit confusing, but I think the majority of you watching this video know exactly what I'm talking about. As far as the finish on the upper is concerned, it does have more of a matte finish on this particular colorway and that's something that will vary from colorway to colorway as it did with the original Phantom 1. But again, the texturing in my opinion, while it feels a little bit different to the touch, the actual touch on the ball um, really isn't any different. So that's not something I would worry about all that much. The upper is also finished off with ACC all condition control, acting as your wet control element, but you'll get that on all the top end models from Nike. The lacing system is off-centered as you guys can see, being that this is the Phantom 2, it does have a fly knit central area, tongue if you wanna call it that, and a fly knit collar given that it is a mid cut model. So a lot of people like to ask me what is better, the Phantom 2 or the Finish. Quite simply guys, they're exactly the same shoe. There's no performance difference between the two. The only difference is one, the look because of the mid cut or low cut design and the way the shoe fits in the heel. One doesn't fit better, one doesn't fit more comfortably. It's purely a matter of personal preference as to whether you like a low cut shoe or a mid cut shoe. For me personally, I prefer to wear the low cut finish, but I know a lot of people like the mid cut aspect of the Phantom 2. Again, it really just depends on what you want slash like, because one isn't going to outperform the other. The collar itself, it's an elasticated fly knit, no structure here, there's no stability to this, there really isn't any protection, it's not an ankle support in any way. It's just an extension piece that, like I said, changes the look of the shoe, as well as the fit in the heel area, something we'll talk about a little bit later during the on-feet portion of the video. You have an internal plastic heel counter, a smooth synthetic leather liner with some padding back there as well. The insole is fully removable, it features a mesh liner on top, and is made from a single layer of this black foam, that's actually pretty decent, uh, not too bad of an insole at all. And then moving on to the bottom of the shoe, you're going to find a glass nylon sole plate that has some good thickness to it, as well as some decent stiffness, but that is something that wears in quite nicely. Uh, so don't expect them to be as stiff as they are out of the box. Give them a couple hours of wear time and it becomes a lot more flexible in general, uh, but a good sole plate nonetheless. And then of course you get the Hypervenom stud pattern, which I guess doesn't really compare to the Mercurials all that much anymore. But in comparison to previous Mercurial stud patterns, this is kind of a similar layout, but with conical studs. So because of the conical shaped stud, it's not quite as aggressive in terms of outright bite, but you do get that freedom to kind of twist and pivot when your foot is planted. And as far as traction is concerned overall, it works very, very well on firm natural grass. Never had any issues with it, and it's not one of those stud patterns that many people seem to complain about. So from a traction standpoint, it definitely gets the job done. And overall, it is a very, very good shoe. In my opinion, an improvement over the original variation of the Phantom 2, as well as the Phantom 1. It kind of combines the best of both worlds from the two different designs. And the final package, like I said, is a very, very good shoe. When it comes to weight, the Phantom 2 is a pretty lightweight shoe. So for the sake of this video, I'm gonna weigh them for you today in real time using this scale. Keep in mind that this is a brand new pair in a size 9 US. We're gonna throw them on the scale and you can see that they weigh in at 7.65 ounces the equivalent of 217 grams. So the upper change really hasn't impacted the weight of the shoe in any way, for those of you guys that were wondering. And like I said, the overall experience of wearing the shoe is that the shoe feels pretty light on your feet. It fits really well. Uh, the fly wire, as well as the heavily reinforced liner, really does a good job of locking your foot in place. So you get a very responsive sensation from the shoe, which only adds to the lightweight effect that the shoe provides. So it's not the lightest shoe that money can buy. If you want something lighter, uh, and also thinner and with a different fit, maybe look at the Mercurials, but if you like what the Hypervenom has on offer, you're unlikely to have any issues with the weight of the shoe. All right, so here is a look at the Phantom 2s on feet. On my left foot, I have the stock black laces that come with the shoes, and on my right foot, I have a pair of neon yellow reflective SR4U replacement laces. If you're interested in a pair of replacement laces for yourself, the website to go to is www.sr4ulaces.com. You find a direct link to that website down below in the description of this video. 
show and you also find a little pop-up on screen that'll take you directly to the website. So again, if you're interested in the pair, be sure to go ahead and check it out. Now in terms of how these things fit and feel on feet, the Phantom 2 fits quite nicely. Again, in comparison to the original variation of the Phantom 2, this Generation 1 Nike Skin Upper is more flexible and it just has a more comfortable fit and feel on feet in general. It takes some time to break in. The sole plate is, like I said, a little bit stiffer at first. It does have a more significant liner, so the upper does soften up significantly after a couple of wears, but the lockdown is still very good. The same general shape of the Hypervenom remains, and it's a good fitting, comfortable shoe in general once you get used to them and once you've given them a couple hours of wear time. Uh, the mid-cut aspect of the shoe, that is, with all Nike models, kind of just take some getting used to. Um, it's recommended that you don't wear them straight into a game or straight into a free kick session or something like that. Just take your time with them and you'll get used to how they fit and feel to the point where you'll stop noticing any kind of discomfort at all. But just know that in the heel area with the mid-cut models, discomfort at first is fairly normal. Um, as far as fit is concerned, the shoe does have a tighter fit overall, but I wouldn't say that they are excessively tight. Um, definitely not as narrow fitting as something like a Mercurial model. I think they will fit most people. Um, if you have really, really wide feet, maybe not the best option. And as far as stretching is concerned, you're not going to get much stretch out of these shoes, mainly because of those flywire cables, which aren't really going to give. They're kind of part of the structure of the upper. Uh, so for the most part, the shape of the shoe out of the box is a shape that will remain throughout the lifespan of the actual shoes. And as far as sizing is concerned, I'm wearing my usual size 9 US here, and the fit and the length is absolutely perfect. So if you are looking to order a pair of these for yourself, I would strongly recommend going true to size in order to achieve the best possible fit. All right, guys, that is it for my review of the Pitch Dark Nike Hypervenom Phantom 2. If you guys are interested in a pair of these for yourself, be sure to check out the review page on my website. That is the first link down below in the description of this video. On that page, you'll find the Buy It Now links with exclusive SR4U coupon codes, where you'll be able to pick these up below their normal $275 retail price. Uh, if you have any questions at all regarding this shoe, leave them down below in the comments, and I definitely will get an answer out to you. If you enjoyed today's video, found it helpful and informative, be sure to support it with a like. Subscribe if you haven't already for daily videos on all the latest and greatest soccer gear. You can find all my social media information linked in the description as well. Other than that, guys, hope you enjoyed today's video. As always, thanks for watching.